next couple of minutes is actually a video that was in yesterday's video. But that's just to make this one a little bit more relevant. This one is all about the seat, the new seat for the canoe. So I figured I'd add that part in so it all makes more sense if you haven't seen yesterday's video. Okay, so outside you got to look at the canoe and the fact that the front seat is missing. Here is the seat. Frame parts. And all the nylon webbing. I took all that off last night and moved all the staples. I'm going to reuse that. Uh, I'll show you a couple pieces here. Uh, it's put together. I assume you can see this from this camera angle. It's mortise and tenon construction, so these guys fit inside. It's not just a butt joint. That's not going to be strong enough. But mortise and tenon. And this guy is obviously all rotted out. It was on the verge of breaking just with a little bit of downward pressure from my hand. Definitely not going to cut it for a trip. Contacted my friends out at Clipper Canoes. They're sending a new pair of seats and we'll replace both the bow and the stern. The stern seat's not in too bad a shape, but hey, may as well replace them both at once. I want to go canoeing now though, hopefully by tomorrow. So I need a temporary seat. So I took some scraps of paper. You get that here. Set you over there. Took some scrap cherry wood I have here in the wood shop. And cut out pieces to lengths, matching up the lengths. The rudders here. I marked out the uh, these guys here, and uh, I'll let some of that out. Mark these guys out. Cut them out on the bandsaw. Probably didn't see that. Cut those out on the bandsaw. And what I have to do is finish marking out the long pieces and get ready to put these in. Drill those out. It's a drill on the drill press, which I have uh, here. Round out the edges, smooth that out. And these guys will go together. That'll get all glued up. And then the webbing will go on. I'll round the edges a little bit first, and I'll have a new temporary seat. Uh, Coat set of tongue oil on it as a finish. And I, then I'll have it up back on the canoe. Should be good to go. Friday or Saturday launch, that's the plan. This is just a temporary seat. After I get back and the new seats arrive, I'm going to swap it out, put the new ones in. Why? Why don't I just keep using this? Well, I could, but this one is going to be nothing fancy. It's straight across, whereas the old ones, you can probably see here, have a nice curve to it. It's a much more comfortable seat. Now, I could get some oversized cherry and uh, make up a real nice set of seats myself, but we're in early October. This is my favorite time to go camping, canoe tripping in particular. The fall colors are out right now like crazy. I don't want to take my time building up a couple of nice seats. I just want to get something temporary that I can get done in a day, get together, get going, get out of the water, have some fun. When I get back, I'll put the new seats in, get back out for another trip. I'm also going to be doing a bike trip in between that for a few days. Once we hit November, that's when the sea kayak's coming out for some multi-day trips over Lake Superior as well. So I'm going to get back to work on this. Like I said, I thought I'm doing a video on making the new seat. But I'm just going to whip through this, get it done. I'll talk about it a little bit more in another video. I'll show you the finished product. Again, it's a temporary product. And then when I get the new seats, I'll probably do a quick video of removing the old seats and installing the new ones. Anyways, that's it for now. So hit the like button, leave any comments down below. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned for when I get back from this trip. There will be a whole series of videos coming out on that one too. So I'll talk to you soon. Skipping ahead now to where we're finishing up the joinery woodworking and getting ready to glue it up using the epoxy resin. fitting the joints before putting on the epoxy and gluing it up and clamping. Hey folks, so it's now Friday and here's the frame for the new seat. I uh, put it together, mortise and tenon joints. 
Use West Systems Epoxy and a filler to thicken it up. Fill up on any gaps. Get nice strong joints in here. And I just let it cure overnight. As you can see, we've got to clean up the edges a little bit. Do some sanding, round over the edges. And then we'll put the webbing in. The webbing's sitting on the bottom of the canoe there now. There's the steering seat. Shows you more or less what it's going to look like. Again, this is a temporary fix. New seats are on order, and I'll put those in after I get back from this coming canoe trip, and after they arrive, of course. Anyways, I'm going to get at it. Let's get these clamps off here, first of all. So, clamps aside for later. Just grabbing my ear protection here. Okay, so we've got it all AD grit sanded, removed most of the epoxy squeeze out, and smoothed her over. Now we're just using the spoke shave to uh, round over the edges a little bit. Probably being fussier than I should be, seeing as this is just a temporary seat, but that's just the way I am. squared off edge. Just round her out a bit. This is one of my four Veratis spoke shaves from Lee Valley Tools. I use them on my paddle building all the time of course and also on some other projects. This one, let me get these shavings out of here. curved one as you can see. Good for rounding off corners, rounding off shafts. This boat shave I use mostly for the blades. It's a regular straight one. I'll just show you that. And I'll show you one other one. Two of them. This one has a curved bottom for doing different types of surfaces. And then I got this here big bad boy right here. I use this one a lot when doing the blades on some of the wider canoe paddles. So anyways, I'm going to finish rounding this up over and then get ready to then start 120 grit sanding and so on. I'll be back. Alright, so we've got the seat all sanded down. And the next step is we're trimming the, the ends to fit the angle of the canoe brackets in the back. So as you go, well you can't see me back there. The uh, one closest to the center is going to be wider because the canoe flares out, of course. So you just got to trim these to make them fit. It's going to be trial and error. Get it closed this time. Check the fit and go back and trim a little bit more if need be. Yeah. 
see this part, I'm just going to walk to the other end of the canoe and test fit. Perfect fit, first try. How about that? Okay, folks, I'm back. One final rub down of the seat frame with the clean cloths. Remove some dust. What we're going to do next is put on a couple of coats of tongue oil. We'll put on one coat, let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes, then rub it down. Removing the excess, I'll let her sit for an hour or two, put up the steel wool, add a second coat, maybe a third coat later on, but I'm not going to be very fussy, it's not a paddle, and it's not even a seat I'm going to use long term, I'm using it for one trip. A couple of coats of oil, after that, I'm going to put the webbing in, get that all done, then drill the holes and get her mounted. This canoe will be in the water tomorrow. percent pure tongue oil. Avoid using what's labeled as a tongue oil finish. That's what you find in the big box stores. It is not the same thing. It's not even close. I've tried a lot over the years and uh, yeah, 100% pure only. Look how that changes the color of the wood. Just like when I'm doing paddles. Hold on a sec while I get some more oil on my cloth. We said that one of my favorite parts of making paddles is applying that first coat of oil. Get to see what it's really going to look like as a finished product. It brings the grain of the wood alive. And same thing right here. All this for a temporary seat. Maybe in the winter I'll make a couple cool, really cool, nice seats, but take my time. But I'm going to have new ones coming anyway, so probably not. I'm going to set this aside, head into the house for a bit, start getting my gear ready, and I'll be back out to rub it down in a little while. I'm just leaving that bad boy right up against the boat stand for now. Back soon. Hey, and we're back. So it's been about 15 minutes since I put oil on the seat frame. Went inside, did a few things, fed the dogs, and now we're just going to quickly rub down the frame, remove excess oil. A lot of it's already penetrated in quite nicely. We're going to get at least two coats on. Normally I do more than that, but on this one, two coats, get it ready, good enough to go for tomorrow's trip. I'm going to take that shortcut if this was the permanent seat going in it, but it's just temporary. And I want to hit the water tomorrow. There is rain in the forecast for the next seven days, so virtually the entire trip is going to be uh, a rainy trip. So I better make sure that not only do I bring a good tent, but I, I bring a good tarp. I do not want to spend all my time sitting in a tent. So we'll be getting the tarp going. So there, it's starting to look a little bit better now. Let's set that aside again. Wait an hour or so, come back, put the second coat on, you don't need to see that. I'll uh, start recording some more when I'm putting the webbing on and then getting it mounted into the canoe. So stay tuned and I'll be back. Hey folks, so we're back at it and uh, as you can see I'm wearing different clothes. Uh, while the oil was setting up and drying between coats, took a walk to get some supplies for the trip tomorrow and a little bit of a downpour of rain briefly fell. So, got changed when I got back. Anyways, got started on, well, I got the second coat of oil on quite a while ago. Got the first couple of strips of the seat webbing back on. I had, well, let me show you. On the bottom, four staples in each end. The first one, I had four staples in on one end, two on the other, and then, ah, where did I put it? One sec. My stapler that I bought last year, it died on me, jammed up or something, but it didn't seem to be anything jammed. Something inside seemed to have let go, I played with it for an hour, can't get it working. 
Now I do have another one. Took me another hour to find that. This one I bought last summer, a little over a year ago, to work on a, a planter box project for one of my customers and I needed to put a, back, a mesh backing on it. So I went and bought this after not being able to find this. I thought maybe I'd lost this. I hadn't used it in years. After giving up on this guy today, I looked around for this some more. Looked in the house, looked all over the garage out here, couldn't find it. Finally clued into where it was. And uh, I just glanced over this cabinet. I was getting ready to go back out by another stapler, even though this temporary seat isn't supposed to cost me anything. Uh, the new ones were shipped today. I got confirmation from Clipper. And I just glanced over at this, I realized I know where it is. Got it. Now, this one doesn't seem to have as much power as my other one did. So I noticed that staples aren't going in quite all the way. So after I get a few staples in, I'm bringing it over here using a block of wood and just tapping them down that little bit more. So I'm going to get back at it and get the rest of these on. So doing the three lengthwise pieces first and then we'll interweave the uh, other ones. Key is to get it nice and tight. And we want this more or less centered here. And we'll flip over here to the other side. And using a set of pliers here, I want to get a little extra pressure on this. Racing it with my legs. We'll keep it centered. So I want it fairly tight. And then we drive a few staples into it. And these guys, they are going to put that up in there so you can see it. Under one over the other, under one, and through, wrap it around to the underside, and we're going to do the same process, getting some staples into that, and then work our way up. You don't need to watch all that, I'm in the bathroom, I'm pretty much done. Okay folks, so here we are, we placed a couple of pieces of webbing that were in a little bit rougher shape, it's uh, some new stuff, I had a few feet kicking around. So there's the seat, ready to go in. We'll attach the staples down on the underside. And it's going to go into the other end of the canoe up there. I'll get that started and then uh, take a few photos and show you the finished product. And uh, I should be out on the water tomorrow. I'm going to turn the camera off for a bit, get the holes lined up, and get it ready to mount. New canoe seat, all ready for mounting. Okay, folks. So it took some playing around to get the pilot holes all drilled so they would line up. I basically used the old parts laid in place, do that backwards, to kind of line up where the hole should be and drilled in that way. And it took a little bit of messing around to get it all lined up, but we finally have it. Get the other side screwed in, not quite tight, but well underway. We'll grab this nut, get it on. Tighten this guy up. Spare screwdriver, wrong side. Need that one. Okay, that's good. And there's the finished product, all installed and ready to go. Now I just have to finish getting all my gear and food packed up, ready to go, hit the water sometime tomorrow, hopefully no later than 11 o'clock, maybe noon, and go have some fun.